Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this quick video, we're going to have a look at how we can use some nice, simple shortcuts within Final Cut Pro to make work on our timeline a lot quicker and easier. Some smooth things that we can do, like copying and pasting attributes from one clip to another, and then also some nice things like how we duplicate clips. We'll look at grouping clips, how we turn off the magnetic timeline. So a whole bunch of different tips and tricks within this video. Let's dive right in. So here in Final Cut Pro, we have a few clips laid out on our timeline here. We're gonna have a look at a few useful ways in which we can kind of move things around. So the first thing we'll do here is look at how we can duplicate clips easily on the timeline. So if we hold down the Alt or Option key on our keyboard, then we can select a clip and we can duplicate that up. This is particularly useful if you are working with type. So we'll just come to our Titles and Generators and we'll drag a quick title onto our timeline. We'll just use the basic title. And if you set up a style, color, and that type of thing for your title, then it's always useful to be able to kind of quickly move that. So we'll just change our type here, and we will then also give it a bit of a style here. So we'll go to our 2D styles, we'll grab this offset style, which is gonna pop out nicely from the background there. So if we're creating different sections of our video, and we wanna take this style text to a different location, then holding down the Alt or Option key is a nice way of moving that down the timeline so we can then go and edit those different instances of that type. It's also useful if you wanna make more than one line of type. So if we hold down the Alt key here, we'll drag it up and let's make this into two lines of type. We'll split those words. So we'll have timeline on our top layer and shortcuts on our bottom layer. And this just means that we can animate these differently. So if we grab a transition from across here on the right, we'll come to our dissolves and we'll just add a basic cross dissolve on here and we'll drag that to the clip below as well. And so now this with these two layers of type means that we can have them fade in at different times. So we'll have timeline fade in first and then shortcuts fade in afterwards. So just by using the duplicate option there we can quickly kind of move and manage our type. Let's delete these two layers here. Another super useful shortcut on the timeline is to be able to copy and paste attributes. So first of all, we're gonna transform this clip. We'll just turn our transform controls on. We're gonna move this clip up to the top left and actually we'll select the clip below and just drop the opacity so that clip on the top left pops out a little bit more. So what we wanna do is basically take this scale and position of this clip and copy it to the next two clips. So if we select this clip and go to Edit, Copy or Command C, then we can come to the next clip in fact, we can select both of these, holding down Shift, and we can do Edit and Paste Attributes, or Shift, Command, and V. And that will allow us to paste the position and scale and other attributes of that clip. So we'll click Paste, and you can see now those clips editing beautifully, one after the other, in exactly the same position. It is important here that the clips are all the same resolution, so make sure that you're working with clips that are the same resolution when you're copying and pasting those attributes. We can also, if we come to our effects on the right here, we're gonna come down to the color options and we'll add a colorize to our clip. So we're gonna add a tint to that clip. We'll ramp it right up. So we'll map our blacks to magenta and our whites to yellow. And we can copy and paste these attributes too. So if we go to edit, copy, select those two clips and then shift command and V, we can then paste the colorize and that scale. So any effects on a clip, we can paste to the subsequent clips as well. So you've got some real nice levels of control for those different clips. Let's just turn off the transform controls here. Another nice shortcut is the shift shortcut. So if we have a clip that is on the timeline, perhaps below where we want it to be, we wanna move it up without moving it left and right. I'm just gonna offset this from the, the clip. So if I drag this up now, it's gonna move left and right and snap to that clip. But if I want it in this position, so the text comes on a little bit before that image, then I can hold down shift and it will allow me to move it up and I can't actually move that clip left or right. So it's a nice accurate way of keeping your clip in the same place, particularly useful for audio if you're moving audio layers around and you wanna keep the timing intact. So you're able to select a clip, use shift, and that will drag it up and you can see the numbers aren't changing as they would do if I let go of shift and the clip will move around. So shift, when we're moving clips, will allow us to keep that timing intact when we're moving clips up and down. Super useful when you're working on more complex edits. The other option here as well is if we wanna disable the magnetic timeline. 
I find that I'll be toggling the magnetic timeline on and off quite a lot. So basically, if you come to the right here, this is the icon for the magnetic timeline or the snapping for the magnetic timeline. If we turn this off, then basically now when I drag clips around, they won't snap to any of those edit points. If I tap the N key, it will turn my magnetic timeline back on. And now you can see those clips are snapping. So if you don't like the magnetic timeline or you need to turn it on and off, then N is the shortcut you need to toggle that on and off. It's particularly useful if you're trying to make those kind of finer refinements and you don't want things to snap to the end here, as we're, for instance, adjusting the length of this title. If we toggle off N, then we're not going to get that snapping. We can move that anywhere in that position. We're just using the visual we're getting up in the viewer there to see where we want to position that rather than being forced as to where we want to position it. Another useful trick here as well is to be able to group clips. So if we have these three clips on the timeline and we want to be able to keep them together. So at the moment, if I move these clips, they're going to restack and move around and I may not want that. So you can see here, I'd actually want snapping turned on so that these clips snap together, but I also wanna be able to move them together as well, this kind of edit of three clips on the timeline. So in order to do that, I'm gonna highlight them all and then use Command and G, and that will group them together. So you'll get this connected storyline of clips, and basically that will allow you, by grabbing this gray box, to move those all around together. So what it also stops, we'll just do Command and Z to go back a couple steps is that if I'm trimming a clip, it's gonna leave a big gap here. And I don't necessarily want that if these clips are all supposed to be edited together. So I'll just undo that Command and Z again. When these are grouped together, so Command and G, then now when I edit, it's gonna keep those clips together. And trimming is also another thing that we can do on the timeline with shortcuts. So if we are positioning our playhead, perhaps we're using the cursor keys to kind of really fine tune the position where we want that edit to happen. We can either use snapping to snap our edit to this point, or if we highlight the clip, we can use option and the right square bracket, and that will edit the clip that we have selected. It's particularly useful if you have a series of clips, perhaps we have all these stacked up, we've roughly edited them at the end, but we want to get them all to kind of end the same point. So if I deselect, so I'm just going to click away to deselect, and I do option and the right square bracket, it's going to allow me to trim all those clips to exactly the same point. One last thing I'll mention is that if we grab these three clips, obviously we don't want them all stacked on top of one another, then if we grab the transform tools and we drag this down, the snapping is going to work up here too. So I can select these clips and you can see that yellow bar in the middle is the midpoint of this, the horizontal center of this video. And then we've got the vertical center here too. Now, if I wanna avoid the snapping here, so perhaps I want a more random positioning of my videos here, toggling off the snapping won't actually work in the viewer. So you can see it's still snapping to the middle there. If I wanna avoid the snapping in the viewer, then I hold down the command key and you can see now I'm able to move my clip around without it snapping to any point. So if you need to fine tune or make particular adjustments to the position of your clips, then holding down Command will stop your clips from snapping to that midpoint. So you can see with Command let go, it's gonna to snap to the middle of my video there. Holding down Command, it's gonna allow me to kind of move that and drag that around. So that allows a different level of control for positioning if you don't wanna use snapping as you're moving clips around. So you can see now we've got these three clips popping on in different spots in the video. And if we wanted to edit other clips after this, then we can just drag another clip across using the option key. We'll pop this into this group. We can select our clip beforehand, copy it, shift command and V to paste those attributes. And then when we paste those attributes, that new video that we copied is gonna be in the same spot up here at the top left is where we put it. So it's basically copying the location and any effects that we asked it to keep during that copy and paste. So we can kind of randomly assign these. We'll mix these up a bit. And so now we'll create a couple more groups. We'll group these together. We'll group these two clips together and we'll copy the attributes from the first clip and paste them to that second clip. So real quick, Shift, Command and V, paste. And that means that we're keeping those same videos there but moving them to different spots. Obviously we could use different videos if we wanted to, but just for speed and illustration, we're just using the same videos. 
if we want to add transitions to all of these videos in one go, I can hold down Command and click and select all of those videos and then use Command and T and it will create transitions. I might get a little error because I've got the edge of my clip there, but we'll just create them anyway. And you can see now I've added transitions to all of my clips. A little bit of an offset there and some work to do on the edits, but we can use our snapping on the timeline to get everything finishing off in the same spot. So some nice different shortcuts there to use on the timeline and that will be useful in different parts of your edit. If you do have any questions or timeline tips that you're looking for, then please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.